If you're considering using rain tubing for carbon dioxide delivery, here at Tobacco University, we're going to go over some of the details of this method if you're looking at enriching an area with carbon dioxide. All right, let's get into using rain tubing for carbon dioxide delivery for cannabis production. Well, first off, what is rain tubing? And rain tubing is simple tubing that has small pinholes at a consist consistent distance apart. It's commonly hung on light fixtures to allow the carbon dioxide to rain down on the plants, and that's where it gets its name. You'll notice here, there's an example of just small little pinholes. Again, they are small, but they're evenly distributed to allow that kind of even uh, delivery of carbon dioxide throughout the entire growing area. So what's the setup of this rain tubing? Well, rain tubing should be placed in a loop and put in uh, attached to the regulator with a T fitting. So you wanna make sure, as our image shows here, we're using in this example, a bottled carbon dioxide system. We have carbon dioxide coming out, going to a T fitting, going to the loop here containing all of the rain tubing. The goal is to feed the loop uh, from the bottle both on both ends here, that's why I use a T fitting, because this will help ensure an even and consistent distribution of the carbon dioxide. Now this can be for a small 25 foot section, or this can also be utilized for a hundred feet of rain tubing. The same concept does apply. Now what height should be I be mounting my rain tubing at? Well, keep in mind that carbon dioxide is heavier than air, so it will naturally want to sink in the grow space. As a result, most growers will mount the tubing above the plants. However, growers need to take into consideration their specific growing space, meaning where is, is your exhaust system? Where is your sensor going to be placed and how tall will your plants get? These can play into different factors when you're looking at how best to mount your rain tubing. Again, should be relatively high in the uh, plant canopy. Sensor should be placed usually just a little bit above that and how tall your plants will get. If they're gonna get really tall, you might wanna have a system where you can adjust this during the growing season. So general recommendations is that when using a grow tent as an example, as we see here, put the rain tubing along the interior perimeter about one half to two thirds of the way up the plant on three walls dipping down in front to allow easy access is preferred. So in this example here, you can see I've put the rain tubing right along here and then all of a sudden you don't see it in front of the plant. That's because the rain tubing kind of dips down here. We have a flood and drain table. It's tie wrapped below here and it comes up this way. The reason why it drops low in this area, this allows easy access to plants in and out, as well as growers to work their way in and out. With, with this setup, the sensor should be about one foot above the tubing, as we can see right here, to avoid potential incorrect readings and to provide an accurate assessment of the enrichment level of carbon dioxide in this grow space. This also keeps the rain tubing away from the exhaust filter here, and you see notice a small fan here to make the distribution even so there's no hot spots or stratification that occurs even in this small grow tent.